Would you all stand and join me to the followers? We come together as heirs to the kingdom of God. We come together with joy and thanksgiving. We come together to proclaim God's grace that made us whole. We come together to celebrate that we are indeed part of God's family. We come together to shout praises for God's loving mercy and grace. Good morning. Shall we all start our new year out with another year's dawning on page 811? Thanksgiving, let our request be made known to God. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. We can do all things through Him who strengthens us. O oh Lord, be with us this new year, and help us to look to you more closely than ever, to find new roads, new opportunities, new ways of wisdom and study 
a reflection upon your goodness upon our lives. And may we use it to help serve your people and their heavenly kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, as we celebrate and look forward to this new year, we can't help but reflect on all those events and all those situations that happened last year in 2021. And then we've had one of the most memorable and one of the most troubling years that many of us have experienced in our own lives. I mean, 2021 came on the hills of the year before. Many of us experienced a whole type of lifestyle changes, changes in our habit, changes in our behavior, changes even in, for some of us, our pocketbooks. And then there's the changes in the social, political, and community affairs, as well as changes in the normal ways in which we live our daily lives. You know, this year, I took a look, and there's over 30 cities in America this year that are suffering and have had experienced the greatest number of homicides ever in the history of those cities. You know, and protests still continue. Hate speech seems to be at war with free speech. Political unrest and division continue to germinate. Social justice issues, health complications, economic concerns, as well as propagating or promoting more restrictive and limited and isolated occurrences in our own movement, in our own activity, where we can go and what we can do. And it's all because we went to war with this virus at which time we really had no known defense in protecting ourselves, and so we looked to be isolated, contained, or you know, even disabled us a little bit. And now you hear all these arguments and all these discussions going on the last year over inoculation versus other types of treatment. And we're asking questions, do the COVID vaccines actually really work? And there are a lot of vaccinated folks, as we know, that are getting COVID. And have there been other positive results, other types of treatment that are available that really aren't getting that information out to the public these days? And now it seems in this past year of 2021, there's been a greater push of different principles, different ideologies, different beliefs, ethics, so much so that we're starting to question truth and doctrine and science and news and even the facts that we're told. And then with all this information we're trying to compile, we, we have our thick lenses on trying to look through all these lies, deception, truths, inaccurate reporting. I mean, I don't know. And sadly, when we receive it, we question, is it manipulated? Is it opinionated? Is it sequestered? Or has it been rearranged just to ease the public domain? And it's so much, it's so difficult that it, we don't even know sometimes the information we're receiving is even legit these days. It makes it very difficult to know who to believe, who's right, and who's authentic. And now we begin year three of this great experiment as we inch closer to a type of new arrangement, a new arrangement of values, privileges, restrictions, limitations. And there, it is being implemented and theorized by many parties these days. And it's not just by the government, but it's done by corporate structures. It's being done by churches. It's being done by other filters, schools and so forth. And medical uh, personnel, even a lot of blog sites are out there, all throwing out their own opinion, theorizing how to best manage and work together as a community of faith. And, you know, it really makes us take a look at the business and the person of what kind of restrictions and limitations are we looking for or going to move into this new year. So here we are at the beginning of 2022. And so theoretically, though, we always have an opportunity at the new year to restart, to refresh, to achieve, to rekindle, to prioritize, and maybe even become more responsible and doing those things that we've been meaning to do for years. Yes, this new year always offers us new hope. A time to do something different. Maybe a time to do something new. A time to do those things we've all been meaning to do. 
This new year gives us one more chance to maybe not make the same mistakes I've been making in the past. And maybe we'll be smarter in things like with our little savings account or our investments. Maybe we'll be nicer, more hospitable and helpful to others and to our neighbors. Maybe more caring to our family and our friends. Maybe hopefully more involved in church or in ministry or in community outreach programs. You know, I always thought it interesting that during the Christmas season, we put all our hopes in the light and the love of the Savior Jesus the Christ. But then one week later, on New Year's Day, we moved from looking to God for all our hope and direction to putting all our hopes of the future on our own merits, on our own achievements, on our own resolutions of trying to do something. I mean, at Thanksgiving, right, we're all very thankful for God. We're thankful for all the blessings we receive. And at Christmas time, we're grateful and humbled by the eternal gift that God gave us through the birth of His Son. But by New Year's Day, we put all those hopes, all those dreams, all those expectations sort of aside, and we put all those burdens back on our own shoulders, and we look to try to find ways, well, I'm going to try to prove my actions or my behavior. I'm going to try to make some self-made wills, some self-made desires. Chris, it's up to me to start these new projects, these new hobbies, or to clean out some things. I mean, think of all the popular New Year's resolution of all these new goals that folks try to achieve each and every year, right? I mean, how many of you have made a resolution, I'm going to try to stay more healthy this year, uh, do more exercise, or I'm going to try to eat right this year? You maybe do a better job of managing your finances and your savings. Maybe perhaps give up some of those old bad habits that you've been doing. And maybe start new habits, good habits, new projects, maybe some new hobbies. You know, research shows that while 52% of people each year make New Year's resolutions, less than one month it shows that over 90% of those folks have already given up trying to do their New Year's resolution by the end of January. And as the year goes on, less than 6% even manage to try to uphold some level of these New Year's resolutions. And I find it very interesting that very few of us seem to have to make a New Year's resolution about having a more godly attitude during the New Year. Like being more resourceful, more diligent. Maybe you're more active in being the best disciple of Christ that you can be in all you say and all you do. For we must remember, as it says in Deuteronomy chapter 31, beginning with verse 7, it is the Lord that goes before us. He will be with you. The Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be fear or do not be dismayed, for the Lord will offer you his peace and comfort, even in the midst of all turmoil and all that tribulation and frustration. We must trust that God will refresh you, revitalize you, reinvigorate you, restore your faith in Him. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, just as we talked about in response to reading. For the Lord does have plans for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope, plans to give you a future. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, because it tells us, God, Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow's going to bring its own worries. Today's troubles is enough for today. Well, I can say amen to that one. So this year, this new year, we ought to look for new hopes, new beginnings. For God offers that to each and every one of us. It says in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, we should seek the Lord and seek His strength and to seek His presence continually in our life. 2 Timothy chapter 1, for God gave us a spirit, a spirit not of fear, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. Psalms chapter 91, verse 1. For to those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, He will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And then we're supposed to seek the kingdom of God first and His righteousness, and then all those things will be added unto you. As it says in Romans chapter 12, love one another with brotherly and sisterly affection. And outdo one another in showing honor to them. And then Colossians chapter 4, for dear verse 5, we should walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of their time and your time. And let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer 
each and every person. And don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. For this new year, if we remember that we have a loving and forgiving God, and we've confessed our sins to the Lord, God will remember them no more. I mean, that alone should try to encourage us to strive to do better with God and to continue to run that race in serving and doing the desires and the will of the Lord and offer godly care and concern to all of God's people. Peter denied Jesus, but Peter was forgiven, and Peter became the solid rock of faith for all. David sinned with Bathsheba. He even had her husband killed on the battlefield. But he came to God, he confessed to God, and he received God's forgiveness. Hence, if you fail in your New Year's resolutions, never give up. Just get up again, confess your sins, and know that Jesus is there for you. Jesus supports you. Jesus loves you. And Jesus will always be there to help you in trying to be the best disciple of Christ God's given you and God's called you to be. For this year, let us be the disciple of Christ for Christ and serving the needs of all of God's people. Let us pray. Thank you for your gracious love and guidance over our daily lives. Open our hearts and our spirit to better serve your needs and your people. Enlighten us to be better disciples of Christ. Inspire us to continue to strive and to do good and to be good. Give us wisdom to make choices that glorify you and honor you. Help us to be more dependent upon you each and every day as we look to you each and every way. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. received from the Lord what I also passed to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance for me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. For whatever you eat this bread and drink this cup, that proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Dear Heavenly Father, on this first Sunday of another new year, we take this bread and this cup with a sense of newness and anticipation as we remember Jesus at his table. Grant us the insight, O Lord, to see more clearly the path you would have us follow in the days to come in this new year. Be with us in our efforts to know your will and to serve you more faithfully. Amen. Well, thank you for uh, being with us today in this nice, cool morning. It sure is warm in here. And it's great to see all our friends and family today. And we're glad that you joined us. 
Now, as we begin to look to the future of this new year, the question we have to ask is, God, in your plans for this new year, and what future New Year's resolution are you willing to make that includes God? And now, most of us, we're trying to walk this road of discipleship. We're trying to be faithful. We're trying to be thoughtful. We're trying to be authentic in our walk, in our talk, and in our actions. And there might be some folks today that have decided maybe this, this, this New Year I'll dedicate my life to the Lord and try to do that work of discipleship. If you feel called to change your life for God, all you have to do is humble yourself, go before the Lord, ask Him to forgive you of your sins, and God will accept you just as you are. And we at First Christian Church, we accept you just as you are. Now, we don't offer a lot of hoopla here, right? We don't, we don't have a professional stage-like production, and, and what you see is sort of what you get, right? Now, we might not be the best disciples out there, but at least we're honest, we're open, we're authentic, and we try to look each day to God and the Bible to each other for wisdom, direction, and teaching. If you'd like to start out the new year to be a new member of God's heavenly kingdom, we always have folks here willing to pray with you, to talk with you, and to visit with you, and to welcome you. God chose you, so remember to choose God. And if you let God come back to God, he'll accept you just as you are and with open arms. Believe that God is there for you. Know that God cares for you and that God accepts you. For this year, have no fear, for God is near. Let's pray. You know, we chose to live by choice, not by chance. We choose to be motivated, not manipulated to be useful and not used, to make changes and not excuses, to excel and not to compete, to give and not take from others. May we use our gifts, our talents, our skills in advancing the kingdom of heaven, to be more flexible, to be more available, to be useful, and to believe upon the Lord Jesus the Christ. For after all, we know that Christ believes in us. Let us show our belief in him. Amen. Would you please join me in the benediction? The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. And no matter where you may be, remember that God is there with you, offering divine peace. <laughs>